Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we have a light-hearted video. I'm gonna show you a few of the orchids which are spiking at the moment that just fill my heart with joy. I'm so excited to see them and it's been a while since I did this type of bragging. Well, I don't know what type of video this is, but I do want to have a sort of recorded entry for some of these orchids because I've really been waiting on them for quite a long time or I've been excited for them um, so I'll try to make it still as educational as possible so with that in mind let's start with the one that is among the ones that I'm the most excited for and this has to be the Sofro Cattleya Chester now there is a high chance this orchid is now called Cattleya Chester because so for 90s some of them at least have been reclassified to Cattleya. I prefer to call it a Sofro Cattleya because so for 90s are pretty special orchids in my opinion. They are a Cattleya family orchid, yes, but unlike most Cattleyas, they remain very tiny. They're a sort of miniature Cattleya. I wouldn't call this a proper miniature, but definitely in comparison to the very tall Cattleyas, it is actually a tinier Cattleya and they actually prefer slightly cooler temperatures, again, unlike most other Cattleyas. So I was a little bit worried that the Chester would not do all that great in my environment, in my conditions, but it turns out it was absolutely not bothered by the heat or anything. She was not placed outside unlike the other Cattleyas. And remember I told you it had a um, closed leaf? Well, it started to split and inside there is definitely a bud, not sure if two, but definitely one forming, so it's not a trapped leaf or anything. This orchid can actually produce two leaves as well, as you can see in the back there, it can produce pseudobulbs with one leaf or two leaves. So I was a little bit scared that this is a trapped leaf. I've had it happen before and I got so excited about nothing. It happened actually recently with the Cattleya jungle eyes. I thought, oh yes, another spike for the summer or the year. No, it was a crinkly leaf. So I was a little scared that it was the case with the Chester, but no. I'm so incredibly excited about the Chester because, well, let me just show you a little picture. Given my mind, not necessarily look like that unless it is a clone. Not entirely sure what it is, but it's definitely in the orange spectrum and that's what I like to see. I have a little bit of an obsession with warm colors, even pinks. I do love warm, sweet pink. I have an issue with cold purple colors for whatever reason. So you can imagine I'm really looking forward to seeing this orchid bloom. It's not supposed to be fragrant, it's just supposed to be beautiful. And I've cared for it for a year now, maybe a little more, which is not a whole lot of time, so I'm surprised it blooms, but of course the anticipation was there. So I can now finally rest assured that it's not a crinkled leaf in there, it's actually a bud at least. Okay, this one took me a little bit by surprise, but it definitely warms my heart. This is an orchid one of you lovely people sent to me about two years ago, and it is the Brassavola nodosa crossed with Lelia purpurata variety Carnea. It's a 4N orchid. It has to do with a larger number of chromosomes, and usually orchids that are 4N have bigger blooms, flashier colors. I'm not entirely sure. I think this is the only 4N orchid that I own. Maybe the Bellina as well. But anyway, finally it decided to put out a bud, as you can see it here. The story with this orchid is a little bit more complicated. One of you guys sent me, I think, a division of yours, and transport was really not kind to it. I don't know, maybe I still have older growths in the back there? I do actually, this is part of the older growth, some of the original growths completely died off, but that's okay because new growths were created and as you can see, there is a sort of a transition and the latest pseudobulb was this one. I was really hoping it would bloom, but it was created in the cooler season, probably this orchid didn't like it and now look at this one. And the growth is not tinier than the previous one, it's just immature. If you look at the sheath where it ends, it ends in the same point where the previous sheath ended, so the leaf will grow more. I was just took by surprise because of the bud. Some brassavolas can actually form the bud as the pseudobulb matures as well, and here we have the BC Saint Andre. I was just not sure if this one would do it, apparently it does, and it's developing super fast. I actually noticed this bud two days ago, I barely noticed it, and now it's almost out of the leaf, so it's growing super super fast, but not only the bud is spectacular. 
Do you see the root production here? I think I should move you a little closer. Look at that. And we have another root which is super uh, vigorous here. Look at those roots. They're really vigorous. This orchid has started to grow so fast and so vigorous ever since she completely recovered from that transport. I'm also guilty of not necessarily pampering it way too much. I did stress the root system with the changes of the setups. Even though it wasn't a big, big stress, you can see it didn't regress. It was a little stress, let's say. So I'm happy that finally she's happy, she's healthy, not stressed, and keeping her outside made all the difference. She's growing so much faster outside, absolutely loves it, and I cannot wait to see how the flower looks like. Because if you didn't catch that, I've never seen this orchid in bloom in the division, or maybe it was an entire plant, I'm not sure. What I received never actually bloomed before, so it's a mystery how it's going to look like. Okay, next one is a sort of a maybe type of orchid. I'm not entirely sure if it's gonna bloom, but for the first time this orchid produced a sheath, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. I have this orchid for four years, I think. It is my very first Encyclia cordigera, which was labeled as Epidendrum atropurpureum. I've never seen it in bloom because she suffered so, so much. Look at it. This, this is what I have after four years of caring for it. First of all, I potted it in a very bad medium. I managed to transmit a very, very bad fungal infection. I thought I would lose it. From time to time, I do talk about this orchid. You might already know it. It had a lot of black staining on her leaves at some point. I thought I was gonna lose her, but then it made a full recovery. I did switch out that medium, try to treat her a little bit with hydrogen peroxide, but she overcame the infection on her own. And ever since, she's kind of bouncing back. And she's never been super, super fast in her growth until the past year or so when she started to finally grow normally. But you can see there was never any sheath, any spike, any anything, obviously. But she is healthy right now. She doesn't have any more spotting. And the new growth, which is still developing, it has a sheath, which I'm gonna try to show you. So there you go. I hope you can see it inside. It's even a little bit inflated. I don't know, maybe it's just my impression, but it's definitely something new. So given that I have two more Cardigeras, why would I be excited for this one? Well, first of all, it's my very first Cardigera. No matter what, no matter what variety or color she is, I will still love it because she's my very first orchid of the type and she will always be in my collection. I'd much rather give away the others, you know what I mean? because she's a survivor and she belongs with me. Alrighty, so that's why I'm excited. But second, it might actually be a variety that I don't have. If you know, I don't have the purpurea, which is actually the one that I wanted from the beginning and I just didn't have the luck to receive it. So because this one was labeled atropurpureum, maybe it refers to the fact that it is the purpurea or rosea, sometimes it's called variety, the one that has a purple lip. There is also variation in fragrance and even though my other Cardigera smells very nice, I'm very curious to see if this one has a little bit of a different fragrance. So overall, I really do wish it blooms even though right now I cannot say if it will, but definitely it is progress. She never actually created any type of nubbin or little sheath ever since I have her. And the fact that she's still around is a miracle. As I was saying, she's not going anywhere. She will forever be with me. I will not insist way too much on this one because I've already showed it to you when, a couple of weeks ago or a week ago. This is my Rinko Stylus Celestis Blue. I wanted to mention something here, a little correction. I was saying in my previous video that Rinko Stylus tend to bloom with upward spikes and Aretas with pendant spikes. Not true. It's kind of only the Celestis, maybe a few others that have upright spikes, but most of them do have pendant spikes. It has nothing to do with the fact that it's an Aretas or Rinko Stylus, so I really wanted to address that and correct it in a video, because even if I add a comment in the other video, I'm not sure how many of you will see it. So just so you know, I just wanted to correct myself. And since we're here, look at this. We have two lovely flower spikes here, and in the back, on the other growth, we have two more. One here, and excuse the end, she's doing her job, and one here as well. I will need to make sure that this spike emerges from the leaves correctly because he's a little crowded there, but I'll see how he develops. Um, so yeah, really excited about the Celestis Blue as well. She's one of my childhood orchids. You might already know if you've seen that video. Let's move on, because I've already talked about this one. 
Next up, a No ID Cat Leia. I've never seen this one in bloom either because she's a sort of a rescue. One of my local flower shops brought in some Cat Leas, I missed it, and when I went to visit the flower shop, they were already out of bloom. They were kind of discounted, they didn't have many, so I decided, okay, I'm, I'm gonna save this one and see what happens. And I think I purchased it last year or at the beginning of the year. Of course, she grew outside and what <laughs> lovely new growths she produced. So we have one new growth with a sheath here we have another one which is a bifoliate growth which has a sheath inside as well as you can see you cannot see it does have a sheath and we have another new growth here this is a little bit of a smaller growth nonetheless we do have a sheath on this one as well inside so one of these sheaths they better bloom i still intend to keep my orchids outside for maybe another two months there is a long way until low temperatures here in my climate definitely she loved being outside a little side note do you see all of this dust and freckling it is actually dust one day a little cloud came by and started to sprinkle some stuff not enough to wet anything but enough to create a lot of mess so <laughs> my orchids are a little dusty and ugly looking at the moment i didn't want to shower most of them because they had new growth i will do it later but yeah that's what this is it's not fungicide or remains of pesticides or anything it's just dust Another Kellia type, which is a maybe, I'm really hoping it's gonna be a yes. Oh, this is a Lelia. Lelia Zip. Hmm, I'm pretty sure it's a Kellia by now. So this one I have for more than a year, maybe a little more than a year. It's a beautiful color. Again, one of those red-orange type of colors. I have two sheaths. I have this growth with a sheath, but it's tiny. The one in the back though, that's a pretty, pretty big growth, maybe the biggest one so far, and it does have a decent sheath on it. It's just maturing right now, so I'm hoping for some flowers. Same story with this one as well. Ever since I put it outside, she grew so much faster and so much better. It is official. My Kelly Hour kids will spend most of their time outside, not in the greenhouse. It's just not worth it. They grow so much better. Kalias, in my opinion, are very suited orchids for the outside world. Not only because they can withstand extremes, but also because not many pests love to munch on them. I don't think I've ever had a serious infestation of spider mites on any of my Cattleya types, be it Brassavola or Lelia or Cattleya or Sophronides or anything of the sorts. Maybe a bite here and there, but definitely if you think about the Dendrobiums or Phalaenopsis, no, nothing of the sorts. In summertime, I do have issues with the red spider mite and with the mealybug, believe it or not. My hibiscus do have some mealybugs. Um, the Cattleyas, no, nothing, not even mealybugs. I had a few mealybugs on my epidendrums, I got rid of them, it's okay, but the Cattleyas didn't even, no. <laughs> they were not bothered by any type of pest. I don't know about grasshoppers. I kind of evaded grasshoppers this year. Snails I don't have because I'm not ground level. I have a terrace, it's one store up. Um, so yeah, there isn't any pest that actually enjoyed my cat layers. Therefore, I don't have any pest on them, which is great. And this extends to the brassavolas as well and other cat layer types. They're just not very yummy, I suppose. So they're a great orchid to maintain outside. I'm not saying they will not have any pests ever. All I'm saying is they're not favorites. I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you ever have super big infestations of something? Maybe scale, maybe scale would appreciate them. I don't know. Let me know down below what they're sensitive to. And lastly, this is not a new orchid. I've seen it in bloom ever since I purchased it every year. This is my Breast of Vola Little Stars. I just wanted to mention her a little bit. There are some things I wanted to share with you guys. Of course, she is in spike. We have a spike here. We have a spike in the back. We have another one here, another here. She does have quite a lot of spikes. She suffered a little bit. Remember when I had those pots falling in the growth space and I lost a growth and some roots on this orchid? Well, she was a little set back by that, not too much, but she completely recuperated. What I wanted to point out is that every year since I have this orchid, she bloomed around Christmas. Now she's gonna bloom, I think next month, I think in October. And this is all because I placed her outside. Growth sped up so much that she's two months early. So that's the difference that it made. It's pretty unbelievable. 
it's pretty logical as well. Outside we have higher temperatures, we have brighter light. I made sure to fertilize these orchids, to water them correctly and sustain all of this growth because if I don't sustain it, they would definitely struggle. Uh, but yeah, that's the difference. It's amazing. Life outside the growth space is wonderful <laughs> for these orchids. Another thing I actually wanted to mention was do you see these growths which are kind of leaning on one side and all of the others which are kind of upright? Yeah, all of these growths are super old and you can see they're kind of leathery at this point. They're not gonna become nice and luscious once again. Even though this orchid does have roots, she's not dehydrated in the slightest. These are just way, way too old, maybe four years at this point. And they grew on a side because this orchid was mounted at some point, do you remember? So all of them were trying to grow towards the light. The mount was actually here and they were growing towards the light. And then I potted this orchid when I moved here two years ago. So everything that you see upright has grown within the past two years. So what do we do about these growths? Well, in time we can actually dispose of them because the orchid has a lot of new growth, a lot of roots, they're not indisposable at this moment. We can leave the base because there are eyes, they can always produce new growths, but in the end they can actually be cut. And if you want, we'll do this procedure in a video. I'll show you how I'm gonna go about it. It's more of an aesthetic type of thing, but also they're just too old. They're not really all that indisposable right now anymore. The orchid has a lot of energy sources, so we can definitely cut them away. And in the end, we're gonna be left with an orchid which grows upright and is perfectly adapted to life in a pot. So these have been the orchids that I'm really looking forward to blooming. I have others which are in spike, of course. The autumn is bountiful. It's actually more bountiful than the summer somehow, I don't know why. Um, but yeah, really keeping my fingers crossed that it's gonna be a nice show. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed revisiting some of my orchids you might not know I have in my collection. And you know the drill? Like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials and other orchid related subjects. Turn on notifications if you like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a new video. And if you're curious about my setup, the media that I use and so on, expand the description. I have everything listed there. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!